our text this morning, Matthew chapter 15, beginning at verse 21. This account is also related in the Gospel of Mark, chapter 7. It is the story of the Syrophoenician woman when she came to Jesus. In these verses, we will find a Gentile mother coming to Jesus with a desperate need. Now, if I were to ask if anyone here has a need in your life, I'm sure there are going to be many raised hands. I'm sure everyone under the sound of my voice has some need, some probably more than others. In fact, I would go a step further and say that many of you here have a need, one need or more, and you are not able to see how that need is going to be met. Maybe you are looking at a de devastating family issue. Maybe you are looking at some dire financial problem in your life. Maybe you are dealing with a problem child. Maybe it is your marriage. Maybe you are looking at some sickness or disease and you are unsure what the future holds. And I could probably stand here all day today and list off problems. But in the midst of your problems, you need someone to help you, right? Amen. You need someone you can turn to for a solution. You need God to work in your life. And you don't need him to leave, lift every burden, just the heaviest one. You don't lead him to move every mountain, just the highest one. Jesus is approached by a mother who is in a desperate situation in need of help. And the message I want to bring to you today, and I believe God is wanting us to hear, is there is hope for your situation. No matter what your need is, I want you to know that God holds the key. And as we look at this text, we will see the plight of this poor woman and how she gets her need met. And I have titled the message, I want you to get it. Get your need to him so you can get what you need from him. Amen. 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 Get your need to him so you can get what you need from him. Yeah. As a theme, a crumb from his hand is more than enough. A simple crumb from Jesus' hand, I want you to see, is going to be more enough. More than enough. This woman needs something in her life. She comes to the Lord and as she does, she's not asking for the whole loaf. She just needs a little crumb. Because she knows that a crumb from his hand is going to be more than enough. Amen? And I believe from her example, we too can learn how to come to Jesus and how to find what we need. So read with me. Chapter 15 of Matthew, beginning at verse 21. Then Jesus went hence and departed into the coasts of Tyre and Sidon. And behold, a woman of Canaan came out of the same coast and cried unto him, saying, Have mercy on me, O Lord, thou son of David. My daughter is grievously vexed with a devil. But he answered another word. And his disciples came be, and besought him, saying, Send her away, for she cried after us. But he answered and said, I am not sent but unto the lost sheep of the house of Israel. Then came she and worshipped him, saying, Lord, help me. But he answered and said, It is not meet to take the children's bread and cast it to the dogs. And she said, Truth, Lord, yet the dogs eat of the crumbs which fall from their master's table. Then Jesus answered and said to her, O oh, woman, great is thy faith, be it unto thee as thou wilt. And her daughter was made whole from that very hour. Amen. Hallelujah. 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 As we look through these verses, I want you to see first this woman's petition as she came to Jesus. I want you to see the reason she came. She came to Jesus because she was concerned about her daughter. Her daughter was demon-possessed and probably acting out in violence and, and anger. She was desperate and she needed help. 
I want you to see why she cried. She cried unto Jesus. The word cried there means shouting, calling out, crying after somebody. This woman was indeed desperate. She was following after Jesus and his disciples, shouting to him for the help that she needed. Why was she so frantic? She was heartbroken, obviously, over the condition of her child. And she was determined that she was going to get the help no matter what. Amen. See also the reason why she called. In recording the same account, Mark tells us in his gospel that she had heard of Jesus. Perhaps she heard of how he opened the eyes of some blind man. Perhaps she heard how he had healed the many diseases of the Jews. Perhaps she had heard how he had driven out the demons from some people. Perhaps she had heard how he had went over into the city of Gadara and cleansed a man of a thousand demons, a legion of demons. Maybe she just reasoned in her heart, if he could cleanse a legion of demons, maybe he can take care of this one little devil in my daughter. She had heard about him. This woman came to Jesus because hope had sparked in her mind and in her heart. And she needed something that her society could not have given her. She was looking for something that her dead religion had been powerless to give her. She needed a solution that she, has been, she was unable to provide for herself. She was desperate and she saw Jesus as her only hope. How many of you can identify with the plight of this woman? Maybe you are dealing with a child that is out of control. Maybe you are dealing with something, or your wits, you are at your wits end and over the situation in your life and you need help. Maybe you have exhausted every means at your disposal and you do not know where else to turn. Maybe you need salvation. Maybe you just need restoration and forgiveness. Whatever the need in your life this morning, I want to tell you that we can take a lesson from this woman. But here is the key. You have to come to Jesus. Amen. You have to bring it to Jesus. Regardless of what you are facing in life today, the answer can be found in him. Amen. Hallelujah. He can move your mountain. He can meet your need. He can save your soul. He can forgive your sins. He can touch your loved ones. He can heal your sickness. He can do it. You name it, he can do it. He can meet your need today, but you have to bring it to him. Amen? Don't be afraid to call on him. He says, you call. Call on me. You don't have to bear that burden alone. Bring it to Jesus. He cares, and he can help, and he can fix it. His is a throne of grace. And he says we can come boldly. Oh, yes. oh, so we can have, find help you, in our time of need. Amen? Amen? I want you to see also this woman's persistence. She comes to Jesus for help. And at first when she doesn't get the response she expects, she stays with them. Wow. How many of us know that you don't get an answer the first time you call? Amen? Amen? And there is always going to be obstacles in your way when you are trying to get to Jesus. Amen. She met resistance at every step as she approached Jesus. She had to overcome race, who she was and where she came from. Verse 21 tells us that this woman came from Tyre and Sidon. Verse 22 tells us that she was a Canaanite. This tells us two things right from the very first start. She was a woman from a cursed people. You remember back in Deuteronomy, when God gave commands to the people of Israel, he says, when you go into the land of Canaan, the Canaanites are one of the people you are to utterly destroy. You are not to show them any mercy. She was a woman from a cursed people. Secondly, Mark accounts tells us this woman was a Greek. A Syrophoenician by nation. She was from a region known for their vile religious practices. She was a Greek from a proud pagan society with a rich heritage, but they hated the Jews. This woman had two strikes against her right from the very start. 
She had to overcome race. She had to overcome religion. She came to Jesus and called out to him saying, Have mercy on me, O Lord, thou son of David. Here she was, a Gentile mother, crying after a Jewish Messiah. She was a heathen, an outsider, a sinner, who had been and probably still was a worshiper of false gods. She had no right to come to Jesus based on religious grounds. She was a Gentile, and Jesus gave her the response. Verse 23 tells us, he answered her, not a word. She had to overcome racism. When the disciples see and hear this Gentile woman calling after their Messiah, they react by telling Jesus to send her away. They wanted nothing to do with her. She was not one of their people. In their eyes, she was different. And that was enough to justify him not even caring about her or her need. She had to overcome rejection. When Jesus did answer her, his words appeared harsh to our ears. First he says, I am not sent but unto the lost sheep of the house of Israel. Then he says to her, it is not me to take the children's bread and cast it to the dogs. His words must have shaken her to the very core of her soul. He probably broke her heart. First, he simply ignores her, as if it, he turned a deaf ear to her. And then when he does answer, he tells her, you are not worthy. Rejection. The disciples rejected her, and now it, it appears that Jesus is rejecting her. But remember my topic to you. You have to get it to him to get it from him. Amen. Amen. Whatever the obstacle, you have to overcome it. Amen. Now, give me your moment. Give me, give me your attention for a little bit, church. Some of you are looking at some of these very barriers today. You must, you, maybe you know that you are lost and you need Jesus, but you feel like you have no right to come to him. You know that you are coming from a doomed race. Your conscience tells you that, and the devil is confirming it to you. You have discovered that religion will not work. You have experienced rejection from the religious people around you, but your need still exists, and you still want to see that your life becomes changed. I want to let you know that you can come to Jesus. Amen? Jesus is self self all that the Father gives me will come to me and I will no wise cast away anybody who comes. You can come to Jesus. Amen? And there are others of you here today. You might be praying and seeking God about matters that trouble your heart. You have cried out to him and to do this or to do that in your life. And there has been no answer and you feel like giving up. I want to encourage you today. God's silence is not an indication of his unwillingness to meet your need. Amen? Rather, his silence is serving to test your faith and to remind you that he operates on a different schedule and a different timeline than you and I do. Amen? In his time, you will see his answer. For my thoughts are not your thoughts, and my ways are not your ways, saith the Lord. Amen. Whatever the obstacles you are facing today, don't stop seeking the Lord. And in his time, you will see the barriers fall. In the end, your fate is not going to be determined or defined by what you receive from him, but what it takes to stop you from getting to him. You would see that in the end of the, of, of the message this morning. Hallelujah. So the question is, who or what is stopping you from coming to Jesus? There will be obstacles, but I want you to see that there will be opportunities to exercise your faith. As Jesus speaks to this woman, he never slams the door in her face. In Mark's account of this account, Jesus, it was recorded that he says, let the children first be filled. The word first there was what this broken-hearted mother obviously wanted to hear. Jesus did not say you cannot have what you are asking for. He said, I have come to the children of Israel and they must be filled first. I want to believe that this, there was a twinkle in Jesus' eyes as he looked at her and said this. And that was all she needed to hear. Amen. The children can eat first, but there's going to be seconds. 
Hallelujah. You see, the obstacles that were thrown up by Jesus were not meant to discourage and defeat this woman. They were meant to mature her faith. Mature her faith. She had recognized Jesus as the son of David. She saw him as the miracle worker of the Jews who was, who was delivering them from their diseases. But she, what she needed to see was that he was not just the son of David. He was the Messiah. The only Messiah. And not just for the Jews, but for everyone. Amen. Hallelujah. No other religion and no other gods could have done anything for her. He was her only hope. He alone was the Lord and Master whom she was to worship. She had to learn the same lesson that the Samaritan woman at the well had to learn. That he was the Jewish Messiah, but he was also the Messiah for the world. He was the salvation. Salvation is of the Jews, but he is the salvation. Amen. Hallelujah. And until she came to that point, Jesus was just maturing her faith. That's what I'm hoping I'm doing with you this morning. Amen. I'm lifting your faith. I'm helping you to see that yes, there are going to be obstacles, but there are going to be opportunities for you to exercise faith. Amen. Amen. Without faith, is it impossible to please God? Faith is the key, and it must be awakened in our hearts if we are to expect anything from the Lord. Pastor always tells us, mix faith with the word. You hear the word, but until you are mixing it with faith, it's not going to do you any good. Hallelujah. And we cannot just come haphazardly any old how into the presence at every whim and fancy and expect to receive help. There must be a true and a sincere heart a genuine seeking and an awakened faith. And this is what Jesus was doing with this woman, awakening her faith. Watch the progression with me. Verse 22, she calls on Jesus based on his role as a Jewish Messiah. She gets no help there. As a Gentile, she has no right to come there. Verse 24, she hears Jesus tell her that his mission is to the nation of Israel. When she hears this, she moves beyond seeing him as just the Jewish Messiah. She now sees him as Lord. She now sees him as being worthy of worship. She comes and she bows down and she worships him. She humbles herself at his feet. She gives him the worship he deserves. And she appeals to him for the help that she needs. Verse 26. Now she hears Jesus compare her to a dog. It is not me to take the children's bread and cast it to dogs. See, the Jews looked at everybody who were non-Jewish as dogs. But I want you to see that there's a distinction here. The word that they used of, of, of the non-Jews is, is that refers to a, a manji mutt. The stray dog that is running around in the street. They refer to people who are, un, who are filthy and unclean and dirty. That is the word Jesus used in Matthew 7 when he said, Give not that which is holy unto the dogs. But you see the word he used here is a different word. Here the word means little puppies. He's not speaking of a mangy, dirty dog, but of a dog that is a pet in the house. He's speaking about an animal that has become part of the household. Amen. Now I imagine that as Jesus says this, this woman caught, catches on to it. And she says, truth, Lord. Yet the dogs eat of the crumbs that fall from the master's table. She wasn't asking for everything. She was asking for just a little crumb. Can you see how Jesus took this woman's little faith and grew it and matured it? Yes, there will always be obstacles in the way to our faith. But they will almost always turn out to be opportunities. If we would continue to seek and pursue the Lord, in spite of every hindrance, we will eventually see him do what we need him to do for us. Hallelujah. You know, a lot of people would have given up. Jesus ignored her. The disciples played the race card. Jesus even compared to a dog. Yet, she persisted. Most people would have thrown up their hands and, 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 and frustration and stormed off in anger. I don't need this. Uh, so much for your God of love. So much for your religion of compassion. You narrow, bigot-minded people. I don't want anything to do with a religion like that. 
This is the way many people react when they don't get what they want, when they want it. But not so this woman. She persisted in spite of every obstacle that was thrown in her way. Why? Because there was too much at stake. Hallelujah. Her daughter was grievously vexed with the devil. Her daughter needed to be delivered from her bondage. Her family needed to be saved. She couldn't give up. She needed help. And she was determined to get it. A crumb might be all she could get, but she knew that a crumb from the hand of the master would be more than enough. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. She wouldn't give up until she got what she needed. How much does your problem mean to you? Have you encountered some obstacles along the way that have made you throw up your hands and quit seeking God about what you are looking for him to do for you? Maybe you looked at the hypocrisy and the don't care attitude of the church and you have concluded that since God doesn't care, you don't care either. Have you decided that God cannot help you and Jesus cannot save you? Well, listen to me here, church. There is too much at stake. If you are going to get what you need from the Lord, you have to be like this poor mother. You have to keep bringing that need to Jesus until he answers. You have to keep seeking his face until he responds. You have to keep asking and seeking and knocking in his time. You will see that he will hand you down a little morsel of reward. Hallelujah. It may be that you need to get past your view of seeing him only as your provider and your protector and your healer and your miracle worker. You need to get to the point where you are seeing him as Lord. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Because until you do, you will not come and bow down in worship. You're going to be constantly asking for protection and provision and miracles, but you will not be seeing him as Lord because only then will you worship him. And that's what she did. When she finally saw him as Lord, she came and she bent down in front and worshipped him. See, he's all of this, but he's so much more. He is Lord and he is God. Hallelujah. Unlike this woman, you may call him Lord, but it's only when you begin to worship him as Lord that you will begin to see heaven moving on your behalf. Hallelujah. In verse 28, we see the prize of her persistence. Jesus responded to her, O oh woman, great is thy faith. He was amazed at the depth of her faith. He had tested her faith with hard words and her faith had risen to the challenge. Her faith exceeded the people he had come to save. It is interesting that in Matthew's gospel, there are only two people that Jesus praised for their great faith. The Roman centurion and this woman, and they were both Gentiles. Yeah. Yeah. Hallelujah. Amen. Here was a Gentile dog that had more faith than the Jewish scribes, the Pharisees, the Sadducees, and the priests. Yeah. Yeah. This is the kind of faith that excites the Lord. Yeah. This is the kind of faith that moves his hand. Yeah. This is the kind of faith that heaven comes into our lives for. He rewarded her faith. He rewarded her by giving her exactly what she asked for. He healed her daughter. And her faith was so strong, she didn't need to ask for proof. She just turned and went back home. And Mark Gospels tell us that when she did get home, she found the devil gone and her daughter lying on the bed. What a blessing. Hallelujah. And I realize that some of you are looking at situations and problems that are every bit as hard and difficult and painful face this woman. I know, I know many of you have prayed and sought about after God about situations and things remain the same. I know that the devil and the flesh are whispering in your ear right now. It's no use. God doesn't care. Go away and don't bother him with this anymore. It's never going to change. And I know some of you are discouraged and defeated and you wonder if there is any help for you. Take heart today, church. There is hope. Yeah. Hallelujah. Yeah. Today might just be the day when the master responds to your cries. Yeah. Today might just be the day when the, you see that mountain start to move. Today might just be the day when your call, call for salvation will be answered. 
Today might be the day when God says to your soul, it's okay, I have already taken care of it. Today might be the day when his peace replaces your pain. and You see the help that you need. Bring that need today. Bring it again. Hallelujah. But you say, Mickey, you don't know how big my problem is. Well, that is true. I don't. But Jesus does. Hallelujah. And here is what I do know. Look with me just for a moment at what he is able to do. Look at Jairus. His daughter is sick and dying. She, he, Jairus puts her in Jesus' hand. Jesus raises her from the dead. Is there anything too hard for him? Hallelujah. Look at Lazarus, dead. Four days in the tomb. Martha and Mary put him in Jesus' hand. And Jean, Lazarus comes out of the tomb. Alive. Is there anything too hard for my Jesus? Look at the multitude. 5,000 hungry souls. They have nothing to eat. He has two loaves and three, five fishes. And everybody has enough to eat. So much so that they have 12 baskets over. Is there anything too hard for him? Look, see the disciples. They are in a boat, in the lake, in the middle of the night, in a storm. They put their hands, their, their lives in Jesus' hand. And immediately the storm is over and they are safe. Hallelujah. Is there anything too hard? See with me, there is a leper. He comes and he bows down in Je before Jesus and worship. Jesus touches him and he is healed. Yes, yes, yes. See a blind man, born blind from the bird. Jesus touches him and he can see. See a deaf man. Jesus touches him and he can see. See a man possessed with a legion of, de a legion of devils. Jesus just shows up and everything is okay. The man is cleansed. Is there anything too hard, church? What is there so hard that Jesus cannot do? Look, there is Jesus. He's hanging on a cross. He is dead. They take down his body and they put it in a tomb. And it seems like if evil has won. But look again, church. Oh, hallelujah. The stone is rolled away. Hallelujah. The grave is empty. He is alive. He is alive. He is alive. And this Bible tells me that he is ascended into heaven and seated at the Father's right hand. And he is interceding for me every day. Is there anything too hard for the Lord? There is nothing too hard for him. Oh, hear me. Hear me this morning, church. If he can do these things, and they are just a sample of what he can do, what else is he able to do for you? Surely he can answer your prayers. Surely he can save your soul. Surely he can save your lost loved one. Surely he can mend your marriage. Surely he can bring that that wayward child, heal your body, fix your finances, forgive you and restore you to. Surely he can make whatever is wrong in your life right. Surely he can do it. I know he can because nothing is impossible for him, but you have to bring it to him. Hallelujah. Don't let the devil tell you that you cannot approach Jesus. So Jesus is open. He says, come unto me. All ye that are weary and heavy laden. And I will give you rest. I will give you rest. You can come to Jesus. A little crumb from the Lord's table might be all that you need today. Some of you might need him to give you the whole loaf. But that's all right. Hallelujah. And I don't know what your need is or where you are today, but I know my God can meet you where you are and get you the help that you need. Maybe you need to be saved. He can save you. You only need to come to him. Maybe you need a mountain moved in your life. He can move that mountain. He is the mountain mover. Hallelujah. Maybe you need to be restored to faith and fellowship. He is able to do that. He can bring you. He can forgive you and cleanse you and wash you and restore you and give you the life that he wants for you. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Maybe you need to see God moving in someone else's life. Your child, your spouse, your parents, a cold worker. Bring it to him because he is able. Hallelujah. Regardless of what your need is today, if you would come to him in faith, you can get it. Even if you have sought him in the past and received no answer, today might just be the day when he would say to you, be it unto you according to your faith. Hallelujah. 
I know he's speaking. I believe he's speaking to many of us today. Get your need to him and get what you need from him. It may be just a crumb, but a crumb from his hand is more than enough. Amen. Amen. A crumb from his hand is more than enough. Thank you for listening. The Lord bless you. Praise the Lord. Hallelujah.